But what the marketing corporate is about is strategy. Are you the no name brand? It's not just good enough now to have a superior product. Do something often enough, it becomes you. All kind of ways to take advantage of this vast opportunity out here. Good morning and welcome to the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gatewood, your host, and we are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. bringing you the good marketing gospel. We're not saving souls, we're saving businesses, we're saving jobs, we're saving our community. Now, if I happen to save a soul along the way, don't hold that against me. Let's just call it icing on the cake. The mission is to build strong businesses in our community so we can put our people to work. And we do that with business development, job creation, and service. So if you, as a business owner, ever find yourself at a business crossroads and not sure which way to turn, hey, this is easy. Just turn on the Marketing Pulpit TV show. And we are on a mission. That's right. We have a purpose, a raison d'etre, a reason for being. And that is to build businesses in our community. That's not a small task, but we can do it. We can do it with your help. We can do it. And that's why I'm here. And I hope you're here to get some of this information so you can share it with others. Don't keep it to yourself. This is... It's good stuff. This is information that I'm sharing with my clients, which is a vast uh, number of people. And some are doing quite well. So these concepts that I bring you on a weekly basis are tested, proven, and they have a history. I'm not going to tell you something. I'm not one of these folks that's chasing the flash in the pan and the get rich quick schemes and that stuff will come back to get you. So what I bring to you, I've already tried it. It's been test tubed. It's been proven. Now, there are always situations where something may work for one company or one individual but that might not work for somebody else. So you always have to go back and make sure that it's uh, applicable to you. And when you get lost, just go to your audience. I will say that till I'm blue in the face. If you ever get lost anywhere in your marketing journey, go back to your audience. Who am I trying to reach? And then layer that on top of what is your purpose? What is your purpose? That gets a little deeper than marketing, but it's actually a part of marketing because it goes back to foundational as to why you even started the business in the first place. So anyway, these are the kind of things we talk about on this show because this show is about mindset. It's about strategy. And that's marketing. That's marketing. It's not just a... Uh, Let's go out here and get a sale for tomorrow. No, we're about building long term. And I'm Robert Gatewood, and I'm here to make sure that happens. You can find out more about me by going to marketingpulpit.com and the show. You can see past shows. You can also find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, all things Marketing Pulpit. I'm a business developer by trade, been doing that for almost 30 years as my own, um, with my own company, Gatewood Marketing and Web. And we've had quite a few companies over the years and we're still doing that. And um, if you need service, we'll give anybody a free consultation. Just go to Gatewood Marketing and schedule a free 15 minute consultation. I'm glad to help you out here because to me, it's not always about just making a buck. I mean, I'm gonna be okay, but nobody's ever going broke by helping people. Of course, we got to eat, but if you want something a little higher level, then we can talk about making some type of arrangements to bring you on as one of our clients. We are busy, might not get to you right away, but we are, I think at the beginning, end of 2021, we actually stopped taking clients. We just got busy. I think the pandemic has played a role. People have changed some of their distribution channels, those four Ps of product, price, promotion, and place. They've shipped it during the pandemic. And so many companies had to reinvent themselves. And we have been happy to play a role in that. And thank you to everybody who's tuning in this morning. Good morning, Maddie out of North Carolina. Glad to see you this morning. And good morning, Maryland. Platinum out of Maryland. Maryland out of Maryland. Thank you for tuning in. And everybody else who's tuning in, if you want to get a shout out, just drop your name in the feed and we'll be glad to announce you. And if you have a company you want to Plug for you. Also, I uh, want to thank you for uh, everybody who supported the show. 
over the years. If you're brand new, thank you. Welcome. If you've been here with us for a while, the long haul, thank you again for making us the success of the show that we have become. I want to recognize Women's History Month this month. Last month, we were celebrating Black History Month, and we made some um, we made some inroads in to, as recognizing and not just celebrating history, but trying to create some new history. We want to create some new success stories. I mean, I like Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman and Martin Luther King and Malcolm. Yeah, but we need to create and celebrate our new heroes. And so this month, we're going to be recognizing women on Women History Month. It's a national holiday. Traces its roots all the way back to 1857. Uh, I think it was first celebrated in the United States in 1909. Now, the 2022 theme of Women's History Month is women providing healing and promoting hope. And of course, that ties into the ceaseless efforts of women during the pandemic. And heaven knows we could use some more healing and hope during this time. I know oftentimes in our community, we feel that giving women and other groups recognition takes away from the contributions and, rep and uh, recognition of blacks. Sometimes we look at women and LGBTQ and immigrants and other people, other groups. And sometimes, unfortunately, some people in our community feel like, wait, what about us? Well, I don't think that you can do both because when you think about it, we are represented in all of those groups, women, gays, immigrants. We're in those groups. So we are being represented. And when we form alliances with other groups, we're more powerful. It's hard to tackle some of these insidious forces by ourselves. So there's nothing wrong with aligning and aligning, our, aligning ourselves with other groups. And women definitely deserve our recognition, our praise. And that's why on this particular day, I do salute women on providing healing and promoting hope. And those are two exhortations that we can really rally around as a people and we can find some common ground. So once again, thanks for the sh thanks for joining the show. Uh, you can find out more by going to marketingpulpit.com. Now later in the show, we're gonna talk about context. If you're doing any type of social media marketing or digital advertising and you haven't grappled, if you haven't <laughs> grasped the sense of context, the concept of context, I'm just going to tell you, you're leaving money on the table. Now, we're going to get into context later in the show, but just to let you know, context is about, in a nutshell, it's about what else is going on at the time. You hear the term often about something taken out of context and take some, you take something out of context, that means you're not telling the full story. So if you take context and apply it in a marketing sense, you can actually it's like adding steroids or octane to your marketing efforts, particularly when it comes to social media. So I'm going to give you the secret sauce of context and how you can apply it to your social media. And you're going to see a, a significant, almost an exponential uh, increase in your engagement, your likes, your follows, and ultimately your sales. We're going to talk about that later in the show. We're also going to talk about things that are happening in the news. We're going to do our segment today. Some very interesting things happening in the news. We're also going to talk about our segment, War in the Workplace. Why are people so angry? And are we ever going to get beyond some of this madness out here that people seem to be hell bent on destroying each other, this country and our community, all, all at the same time? Before we get to that, of course, I had to bring you a tackle one of our long held beliefs, one of our quotes that we talk about. Well, today we're going to talk about the old saying, if you can't beat them, join them. If you can't beat them, join them. Now, that makes sense when you think about it. But also, I'm going to give you a twist today. What if you can't join them? Then you beat them. That's right. But first, let's talk about joining them. Sometimes you find yourself fighting some formidable forces, some forces that are really just beyond your ability to overcome. Sometimes it's not necessarily an adversarial relationship, but when you, particularly in business and marketing, a big competitor moves into the next block, all of a sudden there's an online company that's doing your exact service, might have a similar name, but have more, better funded and almost have the same name as you. 
and you find yourself this is this is a little beyond what I'm able, I'm able to overcome. So in that case, sometimes we have to join. We have to join in with the people that we're actually trying to fight. We do that through uh, sometimes through affiliate programs, through referrals, white labeling, and sometimes you go out and even buy their stock because you say, "Look, I might not be able to beat this organization, but at least I can still benefit." But then let's say for some reason, for an unjust reason, they decide not to let you join them. Sometimes we find that in our community. So in that case, I say, let's go beat them. <laughs> How do we beat them? Well, when you can become a competitor, you can find form a start with a niche market and grow. Sometimes you can join a competitor or align forces with their competitors. Uh, you can not give them your money. I talked about it in one of my other shows. Don't feed the hand that bites you. Don't give it, don't patronize them. Now, this is not about vengeance. This is about survival. This is about taking uh, control of your destiny. And sometimes when there are obstacles in the way where people are treating you unfairly and you can't join them, you find yourself extremely qualified. Uh, you have the resources that you need, but you somehow you're not able to join the club. Then you have to go beat them. Um, and if there's racism, sexism, ageism involved, sometimes you have to literally take them to court. So yes, you don't have to sit on the sidelines. If you can't beat them, yes, some you can join, and they're not mutually exclusive. You can join some, you may have to beat others. But also, don't give them more thought. Don't let them burn up your psychic energy. You can do that. That's actually going to help you beat them. So whatever you do, just know you're not alone. We all have to deal with this on a daily basis. I personally, I do. Some, I've joined. Others, unfortunately, I've had to fight and I've won. And you can do this too, but pick your battles. And if you ever get lost along the way, do this. Let your purpose be your guide. Folks, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about some items that are happening in the news. This is the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gate with your host. And we are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. bringing you the good marketing gospel. I'd like to welcome everybody who's tuning in. I see your names, some of your names. I see your numbers. And if you want to shout out, if you want to join the conversation, just drop a message in the feed, and we will engage you in our discussion today. And don't go anywhere. We'll be right back in a moment. This is the Marketing Pulpit TV Show. saying back in the day good things come to those who wait if you wait it out some good things are gonna happen this world is moving too fast you sitting there waiting man you might miss that boat you might miss that opportunity so even though sometimes you find yourself in a situation where you can't it's just immutable you, you have to wait but that does not prevent you from seizing the moment let's say you're waiting on the market to change you're in a bear market whether it's real estate or whether it's a uh, stock market but instead of just sitting there waiting, you may find yourself taking advantage of some opportunities and getting yourself ready for when the market turns back up. Good things can and do happen to those who wait. But we're living in an age now where we don't have luxury of waiting. So wait if you must. I say even better things come to those who seize the moment. That's right. Get out here and seize the moment, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gatewood, your host, and we are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. We're bringing you the good marketing gospel. We're not saving souls. We're saving businesses. We're saving jobs. We are saving our community.
All right, let's talk about some things that are happening in the news. Um, now, news is, I want you to do this quickly because later in the show, we're gonna talk about context. We're gonna talk about context. As we talk about context, you're gonna, th you're gonna see how some of the items that are happening in the news is relatable to our marketing sermon that's coming up in a moment. Because context is all about what is happening at the moment, what else was going on at the time. And the news, what's happening in the news is a great place, it's a great shopping, it's a great mall for gathering content for your context and the marketing sermon that we're going to be talking about later in the show. I want to say good morning to Brother Brown, the greatest plumber in town. Good morning, Brother Brown. Good to see you this morning. Brother Brown has a plumbing company, and man, he's, uh, he's on top of it. He's really one of the greatest plumbers out here. I want to say good morning to you. He's also a regular listener of the show. I want to say good morning to Leon down in North Carolina, president and CEO of Holla, a great organization, a nonprofit down in North Carolina. And they take their lead from the Messiah tribe and ask that question. What about the children? So thank you again this morning, Leon, for joining in this morning. He also has his own show, Brother Surreal, on the Marketing Pulpit platform every Wednesday from about 7 to 8 o'clock. Thank you again for tuning in and for being a leader that we can celebrate. We have just all these great leaders on our platform this morning tuning in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's talk about some of the things that are happening in the news. Amazon has decided to close all of its bookstores. Back in 2015, Amazon took a, a bold leap. Even though they had all this online, that is beam of online, what they had as much, they really, when you think about marketing, it's about the four P's. Is the product place, product place, product price, promotion, and place. And place is also your distribution channel. Well, your online presence is actually part of your distribution network. Well, Amazon decided to make their brick and mortar stores part of that P, of that place. And many people thought it was a drastic move, a dramatic, and really unbecoming considering that they built their entire infrastructure based on online. Well, they decided it's not worth it. They're getting rid of all of their physical stores, their pop-ups, and so forth. Now, I'm going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the decision that some of these big companies make affect you directly. And sometimes we put too much stock in what others are doing. I talked about it earlier about if you can't beat them, join them. If you can't join them, beat them. You got to make some decisions sometimes, <laughs> irregardless of what is going on in the marketplace. You have to be a trailblazer and not always the follower. Many people have been affected by a decision by Amazon. Now, another uh, big news is that Instagram is pulling the plug on IGTV, that's Instagram television. Once again, they decided that they're going to focus on short-term video like reels and things like that, and they're going to give up on this 10-minute Instagram TV. Now, that's going to affect some people as well. I mean, if you had a lot of 10-minute uh, videos and things out there on uh, Instagram, and now there's no longer, they're going to pull the platform, they're going to give you like a to march. You can get your content straight, but once again, a big organization is making a decision that's going to affect many people. Give me some coffee me this morning. Boy, that's good stuff. See that branding? Man, you can't beat branding. I've done many shows on branding. You want people to see your name and say, wow, that MPI, I know, I may not know what they do, but I know they're everywhere. And eventually people start asking questions. So as part of your strategy going forward, ladies and gentlemen, I just happen to bring that up to some having me a, a cup of coffee, a sip of coffee. Keep your brand out there. Make sure you're branding because people will spend more money on a well-known brand than an unknown brand. Don't you don't want to be the no name brand. Now, there was a startup company called Little Things. This guy, Joe Spicer, he's put put all this money into Facebook advertising. He claimed that he spent a hundred million dollars relying on Facebook. Like many of you now, now you're not spending a hundred million, but you're spending a lot of your time and resources on the fact that Facebook can deliver the customers, the engagement, the links, the visits, the traffic to your website, uh, and so forth. And in many cases, it does. But let's just say you got into a rhythm. You had figured out the Facebook algorithms. 
you know that if you do a certain number of pace of posts, organic posts, you're going to get a certain result. You do a certain number of paid boosts, you're going to get a certain result. But let's just say, based on the algorithm, you've built your business model, as was the case with little things. Well, what happened back in 2018, Facebook changed its algorithm. In other words, all the things he was doing in 2018 didn't apply with the new algorithms. And he claims that lost him $100 million. Now those numbers, of course, I mean, it's not for me to dispute them. That's what he said. So we have to take him at his word. But even on a smaller scale, we, I'm going back to my earlier statement. We have to, we don't live in a vacuum. We have to be cognizant of what other companies are doing, but you have to chart your own destiny. So it's like a portfolio, it's like your stocks. Yes, you wanna rely on Facebook to a certain degree, IG to a certain degree, YouTube to a certain degree, uh, Amazon, their brick and mortar store to a certain degree, maybe you were dependent on them to sell that all these people lunch that left the store on the, at noon. But at the same time, you cannot put all of your apples in one basket. And that seems to have been the case with this, uh, this little thing there. So I've seen it happen time and time again in the industry that I'm in, where people have based their business model on the success of somebody else. Now, of course, like I say, we're not in a vacuum, so you got to got to base it on something. But like that stock folio, you've got to, some of that effort has to be invested in building your own building your own. Okay, let's see what is going on in the news. Air travel just can't get a break. Just when people thought they were coming out of the pandemic, I mean, they put, they're put they punching the uh, the TSA agents and fighting in the airline stewardesses and fighting the customers in the aisle. Just when things you were hoping we were going to see some light at the end of the tunnel, along come this war in Ukraine and it has upset the apple cart again. Poor LM cannot get a break once again. Now, some things you just can't control. They're factors beyond your control. What that does, though, what that begs us to consider is that we have to be, what the word is it? We have to be more diligent about controlling the controllables. Some things you can control. You have to dig down deep and say, look, what do I have control over? And make sure you are controlling those. We can't control what's happening in Ukraine. But there are some things happening here in the States, in your community, in your shop, in your office that you can control. Make sure you control those. Uh, President Biden gave his first State of the Union address this past Tuesday. And man, he was like, he went a little toward the center. He was, um, I'm sure some progressive were progressives. Whenever you see people standing up on both sides of the aisle, you know somebody is pissed <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> that means the people on the extreme right, they're going to be a little upset. And the ones on the extreme left are going to be upset. He made a couple of statements uh, that accepted that I got people on both sides of the aisle standing. One was uh, he said, don't defund the police, fund the police. And I even spoke about that a few uh, few shows ago. I said I 100% agree with the sentiment of uh, real allocating resources and making sure that we're not spending all of our money in law enforcement on guns and tanks and and automatic weapons when we should be spending money on uh, prevention on things like what Holla is doing and other organizations they should be getting some of that money to make sure we don't have to bring out the tanks and the guns but at the same time messaging is important if you want funds to be reallocated sometimes you just have to come out and say that and sometimes slogan just don't get you to the goal line. And so, but that was controversial, one of the controversial parts of the speech. He did uh, also mention the nomination of Katanji Jackson Brown as the first black woman of the United States Supreme Court. So we get women's, we get African-American history and women's history running back to back and she represents both camps. And that was a good thing. I thought he kind of put it in, he kind of fast forwarded through that he said he was talking about it. Next thing I know, he had jumped the subject. I'm like, hold on, hold on, slow down there, bro. 
anyway, it was very interesting. Um, interesting. Uh, but for the most part, I would give him high marks on the initiatives that he brought up. Some of the things are just not moving because we have a Congress that's very much uh, divided and we can hardly agree on anything. But some of those initiatives, I think we should celebrate and get behind. Uh, let's see. Now let's talk about back to work. Man, this is Google. Let's say Google told his workers to come back to the office. They said, look, that voluntary work from home is over. Roughly 14,000 of the company's 156,000 have moved to a new location or approved to work fully remote schedule. The rest, they have said, come back to the office. Now, in spite of this change of heart, work from home is still here to stay. And that means that could spell trouble for some of the cities. Some of these places that have these skyscrapers and big offices that have been set up, really built around a workforce, they're going to struggle. Um, now, this is something that everybody should be aware of. This company called CoStar, some of the employees kind of outed the company, and they talked about some of the things that were going on behind the scenes. And one thing about work from home, there's two things that you, you somewhat give up. One of those things happen to be privacy. And another one we're going to talk about in a minute is pay parity. Let's talk about the privacy for a minute. This co-star, this company, which is a $26 billion data company, and they're in the real estate industry. The employees say they the company had adopted this authoritarian culture and particularly geared towards people who are working from home. And the IT people, these are the folks that control your mouse and your computer and your cameras, they said the company had asked them to surveil remote workers, particularly during the pandemic. They were surveilling when, not only when were they working and not working, such as when they were at the computer, they were also taking stock on what they were wearing, what outfit they had on. <laughs> so many of you who are out at the mall, at the golf course, in the swimming pools, because you're saying, well, I'm, they don't know what I'm doing. I've said this before. Don't, don't underestimate this technology. There's some stuff out here, ladies and gentlemen. I sometimes won't tell you because I don't want people to go into panic mode and walk around like, you know, claustrophobic and, and, and paranoid because, but there is, take it from somebody who's in the industry. There's some stuff out here you really don't want to know about. And yes, they do know. There's technology now that somebody could actually scan your face with facial recognition and have access to all of your social media accounts, your email addresses. And this is somebody who does not know your name. Yeah, this is scary stuff. Some of these things they've tried to keep out of hands of the ordinary citizens, but you have always have some egghead, some knucklehead inside who's going to let the cat out the bag and reveal the secrets. So, yes, I'm saying if you are working from home, you are a remote worker, just go ahead and work, okay? You're not going to get away. <laughs> Either work or go back to the office. But this, 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 I'm going to the mall, I'm fishing, I'm swimming. You can get away with it for a while. I'm just letting you know there's some stuff out here that you don't know about. And this CoStar uh, company, they're just the tip of the iceberg. This is going on on a larger scale. Now, here's an interesting story. They're very interesting. The, the rise of remote work is also creating an atmosphere where somebody doing your exact job could be paid four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty times more money than you. This was a story out of out of a Fortune magazine. That because in the old days, if somebody's sitting in the cubicle next to you then you pretty much, and you're doing the same job, there's pretty much the expectation that you're going to be paid at least close to the same thing. But let's just say that same company hires somebody who's working from Ireland, Pakistan, Great Britain, or even from New York to California. Then that culture of being of paying somebody just for coming to work goes out the window. There's a certain amount of your pay that comes from just showing up. 
Really? Because you're paid by the hour. <laughs> Think about it. You get paid 40 hours. You, know, you have to work 20 hours. You know, maybe 800 bucks. Okay? But let's just pay. Let's suppose that that pay for coming to work no longer exists. What you think about this for a minute? Companies are starting to now create these superstars within their organization. You can't talk to the person at the water cooler and figure out what they're making so you can compare it. First of all, you don't even know who else is working in the company because so much of it is all outsourced. You don't see the people. So what's happening right now, this is going to become more and more of a problem, is that many of these high paying jobs they are paying people based on performance now. I mean, that was becoming the way anyway, but it's been accelerated with work from home. They're paying people more on based on performance than on just coming to work and getting paid for a certain number of hours during the day. Now, what does that mean for you? One, you got to step up your game. You got to step up your game. And many of the young people, too, um, they're trying to decide whether or not they want to go back to the work. They want to go to work when they're given the option of working from home or coming to the office. This is a it's a what that web we weave. It's a it's a tangled web because in many cases uh, the people that are closer to the boss, the ones that are actually coming to the office, they will be getting certain favors of people that are working from home. That's just human nature. But at the same time. Some of these people that are working from home who are performing, who are superstars, are going to be paid on a much higher scale. And many times you won't even know. So what you need to do is go back and find out what the company policy is. And you, you need to govern yourself accordingly. This is not business as usual, ladies and gentlemen. This is not business as usual. So you need to be aware. We're going to take a quick break and come back. We're going to talk about the workplace. Why is everybody so angry? If you are working at a drive through window or driving an Uber or Lyft, you need to hear these next stories. It is crazy out there. Is this a result of lockdown-itis? Can we blame this on the pandemic or folks just crazy anyway? <laughs> and that's just the excuse they're using. Uh, good morning, uh, Brother Thomas. Uh, thank you for joining us. To the, and the entire Marketing Pool of the Congregation, we say, Brother Thomas is a very... Uh, Talented attorney in the intellectual property field. He's also a candidate for Ward 5, uh, not Ward 5, the at-large position in the D.C. government and wish him well. And we're going to take another break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about war in the workplace. You don't want to miss this. Also, we want to thank our sponsors, people like BLE, Executive Suites, have their three locations, one in the D.C. in uh, Largo, Maryland, one in National Harbor, and they have one over in uh, Hub Zone over in uh, College Park, Maryland. Also, Passion Events Design. It's an event, event planning company. Miss Alice, I like to call her. If you have a wedding coming up or something along that line or some great event, then you want to check them out and support all of our sponsors. Go to marketingpulpit.com. We have our sponsors shown on the website and support them. Let's support these people. They're supporting us. They keep us on the air and they keep this information free so that you don't have to pay for it. But you can get this information to help grow your company and be by all means, let's share it with others because this information is needed to help build those strong businesses in our community and put people to work. So hang on, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back in a moment. <laughs> I'm not busy. I'm just in another era. Lock the refrigerator door. Do not let negativity have another bite. Don't feed it. If we know that women are carrying the burden, they should be paid more, they should be given more flexible work hours. I may stop at some period, but as long as folks are the food, got to talk about it.
let's talk about war in the workplace. I talk about stakeholder relationships quite often. Stakeholders is anybody who has a stake in the success or failure of your business. And generally these components, these ingredients work in concert. They support each other. We have synergy. They're like, you know, freaking frat working together. But every now and then, what we're seeing right now, we are seeing them come to blows, literally. Welcome back to the show. This is Robert Gate, but I'm your host, and we are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. bringing you the good marketing gospel. We're not saving souls. We're saving businesses. We're saving jobs. We're saving our community. If you ever find yourself at a business crossroads and not sure which way to turn, just go to marketingpulpit.com and flip through some of those shows. You will be amazed. The answer you're looking for for your business problem is right there in front of you. We have the titles right there on the name of the shows. Uh, you can actually go to Instagram and find some of our famous quotes and inspirational uh, aspects. You can go to gatewoodmarketing.com. We have one minute. We have the Marketing Minute, a whole gallery of one minute uh, pieces of advice that could be the difference between success or failure for your business. I know y'all get busy sometimes. You don't have time to sit there and watch a whole hour show. I mean, yeah, I say that even about myself, even though it's very entertaining. And it's a good way to kill an hour. <laughs> but sometimes if you're in a hurry, you just want to give me the Give me the get to the meat of the matter. So go to uh, Instagram and grab it there, and also go to our YouTube channel. It's all you can go to Marketing Pulpit and find them all. Uh, so thank you again for tuning in. We're going to talk about some of the things that are happening in the news and why people are so angry. And later in the show, we're going to talk about context. In about ten minutes from now, we're going to talk about context and why context matters, and why how you can use it in your marketing. Let's talk about why people are so uh, angry. Let's talk about war in the workplace. Uh, a Lyft driver was arrested for allegedly raping an intoxicated Miami Beach tourist. I'm going to say this again. I've said it several times. I'm just not so sure about the ride share, this whole concept. I know. I love the convenience. I love the fact that it's putting so many people to work. But every week, there's another story. Either somebody is the, the, the rad share person is taking care of some is abusing somebody, or somebody is harming one of the drivers. This young man, uh, Kevin Ro Rojas, he picked this lady upside outside of a bar in a lift in Miami Beach, and he was to take her back to the hotel. And of course, he took her somewhere else. Now, this is another story, too, I want to say to the passengers out there. I know many of you say, look, you, you go out, you get your drink, and you feel like you're doing your friends a favor. So, look, I'm going to call you a ride and put you in this car with this stranger at 3 o'clock in the morning, and he's going to take you home and take care of you. In the perfect world, that's the way it should happen. But I'm not sure that's why I would, how I would handle somebody who I care deeply about. Now, it's not your fault. You're doing what was a good idea at the time but you're still entrusting your life and somebody's life the life of somebody you love into a total stranger and you don't know when it's going to go wrong so what do you do that's a tough one that's a tough one well one take precaution there are Lyft and Uber and all these places, they have some rules that you need to follow. Make sure the driver matches the person that's picking you up. Don't get in the wrong car. I would say at certain times of the night, you just might need to get somebody to come pick you up who know you. Or if you know that person, just give them a ride. Tell them, say where they are. Sleep overnight. Do something. But uh, you're putting a lot of emphasis, I mean, faith in somebody, a total stranger. And we keep hearing this story time and time again. Uh, and TJ Maxx, a worker, was pepper sprayed by a woman who was allegedly shoplifting designer bags. Now, this is another story that's really I'm getting tired of hearing about. These poor workers, whether they're at the drive through window, whether they're in the retail, they are, there should be a reallocation of resources in this country, big time. I'm telling you, this pay inequity has got to stop. I know a lot of these companies are franchises and they manage They set up this business model based on really cheap labor. But that business model is not going to work. It's not sustainable. 
not the way things are going. You can't have cheap labor out here being pepper sprayed and shot through drive through windows. You've got to go back. The powers that be that control these companies, they got to say, look, maybe I don't need a $20 million bonus this year. Okay. I don't need a hundred thousand dollar a week salary. Let's take this money and reallocate it to the people who are out here on the front line. You're not going to have a salary <laughs> if all these people quit. So I'm getting tired of these stories of where these frontline workers are bearing the brunt of what's going on in society. Why these people are racking in millions and millions of salaries and bonuses. It's not fair. And the people are not just turning on the employees are not just turning on the stores and the stores turning on the employees at a jack in the box. A customer was run over after a dispute. I don't know what it is about drive throughs during this pandemic. There is something about drive throughs that, I mean, it seems to be that drive throughs now, <laughs> I mean, you hear about somebody at McDonald's getting shoot somebody, you got Jack in the box, but something about drive throughs now seem to be in the news practically every week. This man was got into a dispute with somebody in the drive through And what he decided to do is the person got out of the car. And that's another thing I'm telling you all not to do. When you get into these disputes, don't get out of the car. Don't escalate. Some of this can be avoided. Now, why would a, a, a 68-year-old man, and I'm not saying 68 is that old, okay? That's getting too close to me. <laughs> uh, got out of his car during a dispute the person ran him over twice at the drive through Now, what's the moral of this story? First of all, ladies and gentlemen, we can get very hot. We're in the line. You've been in the line too long. Somebody's dissing you. Somebody may have bumped your car. Somebody may have called you the word, the N-word or something. So you feel like now you got to jump out in the car and confront this person. You're giving that person too much power, first of all. You have to just write this off as this is a crazy person who's probably a loser in life, and you've got to move on to your life. you got to get on home to your family, pick that little food you got from the drive through go home and warm it up, and move on. You don't jump out of your car because what happens is the case with this young man, this only 68 years old, was run over twice. That's a sad story. And it, it, it was avoidable. And this next story is even sadder. A Baltimore teen is accused of murdering a grandmother when her car broke down during DoorDash deliveries. Now, of course, now I'm going to I'm going to pick on the media on this one, because when you throw in the word grandmother, it does make it sound a lot worse. I mean, there's, there is no level of worse when you're talking about killing somebody. I don't think you have to throw in the word grandmother. This lady was only 50. I think she was only 51 years old. But when you say grandmother, you think of somebody with a walker and somebody with a scarf over their head and no teeth and all kind of images come to mind when you say a the teen killed a grandmother. You shouldn't kill anybody, but media does sensationalize. When you start throwing in words like grandmother, it goes back to that context we're going to talk about on the next segment. But anyway, it seemed like these. Uh, she was driving her. She was doing her DoorDash delivery, which is very similar to what's happening with the left and so forth, where you're bringing food, you're using your own car, your own transportation, to as, and you're being contracted by a company. Well, she was uh, ran out of gas. That's another lesson. If you're going to be doing this kind of work, ladies and gentlemen, you got to make sure your tank is full. You got to that one ride. You may have to let one of those orders go. And you need to pull over to the Texaco or the Exxon or the Mobile or whatever and let that ride. Okay, you missed one ride, but you kept your life. You don't want to be out here at night walking down the street in a strange neighborhood because you ran out of gas during your delivery. Well, she was walking back from the gas station with her gas, and these two teens walk up to her, demand her valuables. She refused, and she was shot. That is so wrong on so many levels. It really pisses me off to take the truth. These kids got to. Now, that's when you start thinking about things like defunding the police. I mean, on one hand, you said send out a tank. 
somebody out here shooting grandmothers. But at the same time, if you intervene earlier, you invest in organizations that are you know, in the intervention level. Maybe we won't get to that point. But once you get to that point, now you feel like you got to throw these people away and, and lock them up and throw away the key. And when that when that's you, when that is happening to you, defunding the police is not what you want to hear. You want to like, hey, lock them up, throw the key away, whatever you have to do, death penalty, and whatever. So, man. And according to Brenda, she said, if you're in a different city, you have no choice but to get lift. I know, Brenda. I know. I know. I know. Let me think about that. You may have some choices, but you don't have many. Let's put it that way. Sometimes you can stay where you are. Sometimes you can call a family member. Sometimes. But Lyft, it's society, ladies and gentlemen. And like I said, I can't pick on Lyft and Uber because this is happening in fast food. It's happening in office buildings. It's happening in the courtrooms. People jumping over the table now attacking the opposing attorneys and the judge and it's society we gotta i think mr brown said it the other week he said we gotta come back to god or something we gotta find something because this is a bigger problem than you left and uber and whomever so thank you again for your comments and good morning uh brand leader model for tuning in this morning folks do i have all the answers today i do not but it's some, it gives us something to think about, something to talk about. When we talk about organizations like Hollow, and uh, they use that quote by Frederick Douglass, in, in addition to uh, the Messiah tribe, it's easier to uh, raise good uh, raise children than to fix broken men. So what happened, we're seeing a, a instances where people have been broken, where we did not invest the resources to rear them properly. And so as a society, we have to do better. We must do better. Now we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about context. If you are a, have a business, a nonprofit, or an organization, and you're dabbling in social media, I'm gonna tell you how to add Octane to your social media strategy. You're gonna say, what? You mean I could be doing, I could be getting twice as many likes, three times more shares, more traffic to my website by doing this simple thing? Well, you don't want to miss it, folks. This is the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gatewood, your host. We're going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a moment because business ownership is like a, it's a game changer. It's an opportunity that's available to most. You got to get some, uh, have those four ingredients. Got to have the mindset. Got to have a mission. You need a market to sell it to. And you need some money. But if you have those four ingredients, I say this opportunity is available to you, too. <laughs> I'm not dizzy. I'm just in another era. Lock the refrigerator door. Do not let negativity have another bite. Don't feed it. If we know that women are carrying the burden, they should pay more. They should give them more flexible work hours. I may stop in some period, but as long as folks bag the food, got to talk about it. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gate with your host. I'm here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. We're broadcasting simulcast on LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. And you can also um, get past shows at marketingpulpit.com. And you can get blurbs and all that good stuff at Instagram. And if you don't have social media, or if you know somebody who needs this information, but they're not social media savvy and they just want to get the info, you can go to marketingpulpit.com. You don't need any social media account at all. You can watch the entire show on the homepage at marketingpulpit.com, which many of you have. And once again, I want to thank everybody who's tuning in this morning. We have some very impressive numbers today. The word is out there that we are here every Friday. I was talking to somebody this week. And they were telling me how there are certain people that won't miss the show. <laughs> and why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you tune into this show? I'm curious. The people that are tuning in, they know the more you tune in, the more you want to tune in because you realize that this information that this information has been gone over years. I'm talking, I can go back 30 years and I keep it relevant. 
I keep make sure that we're giving you current information. We stay on top of technology, the latest trends and marketing. So this is not old stuff. I teach this stuff also at the college. I'm an actually a professor at Prince George's College here in the Washington, D.C. area. I'm also a, a consultant with the Small Business Administration. I've written a couple of books, one called Played in Full, one called Smarter Than the Boss. And of course, I'm the president and CEO of Gatewood Marketing and Web. So I don't just talk about this stuff. I actually do it every day. When I get off this air, I'm going to take this jacket off, turn my cap on backwards, and I'm going to get to work. <laughs> I don't have the luxury because I have a client. I have clients waiting on me. I have a meeting this afternoon, this evening, and uh, but I do take this time every week. This is one of my. This is a ministry for me. It's my way of giving back. So thank you again for tuning in and sharing this information with others. Let's talk about context. Context. Context matters. A lot of things matters in this society. And context is one of them. Um, and why is context this secret weapon? Why is it more potent than many of your conventional marketing and media channels? Well, let's talk about what context is for a moment. You've heard the term, take something out of context. And you say, well, what does that mean? Well, it means what was going on at the moment. Let's just let's give you an example. Let's just say uh, you saw in the newspaper, Robert Gatewood throws baby off cliff. You say, oh my gosh, that horrible dude. Skin him alive, throw him in uh, boiling water, hang him up by his toes with his head in the fire. But then when you get the context, you realize the kid had gotten lost from his mother, a bear was coming, and the mother was down at the bottom of the cliff, so he grabbed the baby and threw the baby to his mother, and then he fought the bear. But if all you heard was that Gatewood throws a baby off the cliff, <laughs> you're gonna say, wait a minute, he's a horrible person, because you didn't have the context. The context is what else was going on at the moment. So, is that, so how, can you use context in your marketing? And why does not context have the same type of impact on something like radio, TV, and traditional mass media, print? Well, because of these five factors, let's, let's go through content context for a minute here. Um, let's see what Mr. Bradley has. Out, like, outstanding webmaster. Thank you, Bradley. Thank you for that, for that uh, plug. And thank you, uh, Marilyn, uh, for... Okay, she met me at my PGCC. Oh, that's right. I did meet Marilyn at the Prince George's Community College Boss Program. Thank you again. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's talk about this context for a minute. Now, you need these five ingredients for effective context your marketing. Now, bear with me for a minute. Let's just say an event happens. An event happens that impacts the mass audience. A lot of folks, in other words. Now, you have to, as a marketer, you have to ask yourself, or a sizable number of those people that were impacted, are they part of my target audience? Okay, that's two things. First, something happens. Uh, a war in Ukraine, a heat wave, a snowstorm, a stock market crashes. That's called an event that impacts a large percentage of the population, either locally or globally. Now, you as a marketer ask yourself, how does this impact my target audience. Okay. So you decided maybe it does. Now the next step is content. Do you have some content or can you create some content that you can get out right away that ties into that event? Okay. People in your target audience, how were they impacted by the war, by the heat wave, by the stock market crash, by the real estate market crash, by whatever is going on, the election. How does your audience, how is it impacted by this event? Now, you have to ask yourself, do you have some content now that ties into that event? In some cases, you may not have content. You have to create it. But in many cases, ladies and gentlemen, you have content that has to be repurposed. Man, let me tell you something. This is where marketing becomes fun. See, I do these shows every week, and after each show, I go back and pull out one-minute segments for this exact reason. We're talking about this context marketing right now, and I can pull out 
whatever's happening in the news, I can probably pull out a segment that ties in. That's all ready to go. Okay, it's ready to go because I understand how context marketing works. And in some cases, you can just create it on the fly. You get your little canvas, Canva account, or you you can sometimes just do a, a simple text, a simple organic post. You can respond quickly with social media, unlike you can with some of the other medium. Something happens and you got to look, let me call up the radio station and take advantage of this, what just happened. Man, by the time you get through the quotes and the prices and they create the ad and get it approved, man, that event is gone. <laughs> like the heat wave is gone. It's cold all of a sudden. The war is over. The stock market is rebounded. It went from a bear market to a bull market. You didn't have the luxury of waiting, but with social media, you can respond that day. In some cases, that minute. So preparation matters. Get your content ready. Archive your content so that you can take advantage of this content is a context by repurposing. If you don't have content, you can create it on the fly in social media better than any other type of advertising. Now, another key ingredient for context marketing is timing. You have to act quickly. Like I say, you can't wait two days in some cases. Sometimes you can't even wait two hours. Once again, no other medium has that capability for you to respond with such quickness. And that brings up the last one. So you have an event. It affects a lot of folks. It affects your audience. You have some content that you want to get out in front of people. You need to get out quickly. What is the delivery mechanism that's most equipped, that's best equipped to do that? And it's social media. Now, many people out here saying, how do I make social media work for me? They just sit there and post all day long. They just sit there and like and share and but they're not adding any context. You're not anchoring it to anything. Context anchors it. When an event happens, it is what happens. We call it, it creates awareness. It brings it into consciousness. Now, which I'm, what I'm going, what you want to do is to make sure that you can ride the wave. In other words, we just talked about Women's History Month. Anybody out there who's a woman, there's some good context for you. It's a good time to talk about the fact that you're a woman-owned business. Okay? Uh, we have a war going on. If you're selling Kevlar vests, then it might be a good time to start posting on your social media. We're talking about a return to the office. Real estate people. Take these articles. You can share articles. You can create content to tie into it. Okay? Amazon closing its bookstores. How can that be contextualized as far as your marketing? You might decide, look, I was thinking about not going into a brick and mortar, but since Amazon is closing all of their stores, I might decide now to let people know that I have a store here, even though Amazon is closing theirs. Instagram closing their, 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 their Instagram, IGTV. How does that impact you? How can that be contextualized? Now, let me give you some examples, some, some quick tips before we get off of here. Don't be exploitive. You don't want to be taking advantage or uh, what is it, capitalizing on some, on some misfortune. OK, so you want to be you want to walk that fine line to make sure you're not looking like you're exploiting a negative situation. But there's no there's nothing exploitive about something that you've already written, something that you already own. You are just putting it out there. The timing can make a difference. You have to act fast. You can't be running up flagpoles and sticking it on walls and seeing who salutes. In this social media driven world, timing is everything. So you can't you can't let me let me run a call the, the newspaper and let them put an ad together on some of these fast moving stories where you're looking to take advantage of context and your marketing. Timing is everything. You want to repurpose your content. If you haven't already in your computer on whatever device you use, you want to build an archive on your computer of some of your favorite posts, some of your favorite ads, some of your favorite videos, put a time on them. You might put a, a, a in that folder, you might say these are one minute videos. These are two minute videos. These are 10 minute videos. You can even categorize, categorize them by content, by uh, subject matter. And so when this context opportunities arrive, you can be the one of the first ones on the block to get that information out there. That's what I do. I have all my content in my computer and it's categorized. I can pull out a story tomorrow on any topic. 
And it doesn't have to be the exact topic. It could be close. You don't have to say, oh, look, I, I did a topic on war. You might can talk about the impact of certain type of catastrophe. Uh, uh, catastrophes that happen and how to respond. So it might not be directly related to a war. It could be related to a hurricane, could be related to some other type of disaster, but you can repurpose it and contextualize it based on what is happening in the current. You can also use it, uh, tie in and get synergy by tying in some of your other medium. Email is pretty effective also for context, uh, immediate response. Also, things like your website. Make sure you get information on your website. And like I've always said, ladies and gentlemen, if you get lost along the way in any type of marketing, one, make sure your audience comes first. And third, second, let your purpose be your guide. Go back to your purpose and you will never get lost with the context marking or anything else that we talked about. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up for today. I'm going to thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the show. Uh, Leon, Gerald, Marilyn, Bradley, Brenda, uh, and everybody else who's tuning in. I don't see all of your names. So the ones that are naming, those are ones who actually put comments in the feed. But I know there are others out there because I can see the number of people who are listening. And there are quite a few. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you don't have to comment. I, I know you're there listening. Some people just want to sit back and listen. And that's, what, that's the way you want to do it. I say more power to you. Just make sure this information, you act on it. And uh, if you have any questions about anything, you can, like I said, you can shoot me an email. Uh, you can go to my website, uh, Gatewood Marketing. Uh, Darlene, thank you very much for tuning in this morning. And he says, uh, thank you for the information. Thank you, Darlene. Glad to have you join us this morning. And everybody else out there, <clears throat> this show is for you. Okay, I'm not, I mean, good. I'm doing it for me too, because when you give, there is something that, there's reward, there's something rewarding about giving. So I'm not going to say if I don't benefit from it. Am I doing it to get clients? Maybe once upon a time I was, but I've told you already, I don't need any more clients right now. Okay. <laughs> I will take on some clients, but that's not my reason for doing it right now. I'm doing this to help. This is my way of giving back. I do it every Friday at 10 30 AM. There's something else I'm going to be, I could be doing at this time. Like I told you when this, when this show is over, this code is coming off. I'm going to put my cap on, might even put on my black t-shirt. I'm going to work. We got marketing to do. We got logos to design. We got uh, websites to build. We have marketing plans and business strategies to put together. So I am doing this because I want our community to grow and prosper. We need to build this economic foundation. And the mission of our show is to build strong businesses in our community so we can put our people to work. So we don't have to keep going into other neighborhoods with our hands out begging for work. That's one of my pet peeves. Summertime rolls around, our kids looking at us, mommy, daddy, I need a job. Okay, get in the car, let's drive over to this other community. Tell them not to hire their kids and hire you. How much sense does that make? When we have the resources and the ability to do it ourselves. That's my mission right here on the Marketing Pulpit TV show. And that's why I'm here every Friday, 10.30 a.m., bringing you the good marketing gospel. Well, what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to leave here this time. We're going to be back next week at the same time. Good morning, uh, Malia. Thank you for tuning in this morning. Glad to see you here on the Marketing Pulpit TV show. And uh, we'll be back next week at the same time right here on the Marketing Pulpit TV show. And if you want to be successful, you have to do these three things. Do the right thing. Do it at the right time. And you have to do it right. And once again, happy uh, Women's History Month. Let's get to work. People don't understand marketing. You can't stop every time the money runs out. You need to come on and tell people why your service is different. Why is everybody so angry? Airline passengers biting the TSA agents. I mean, it's, it reminds me of one of those uh, zombie apocalyptic movies. And as a community, collectively, we're going to be taken more seriously if we have that strong economic foundation. Do the right thing. Do it at the right time. And you have to do it right. Enough talk. Let's get to work.